Right, I'm just going to do a quick overview of MultiBeast, and we get it from TonyMacX86.com, and it's maintained by Tony Mac and MacMan. So what I've just done really quickly, first of all, is go and get my uh, DSDT file from their database, of which there is, uh, there's actually a few. If we look at my board, which is this one, which is the Z68X UD5B3, um, there's two things that I'll be looking for on any motherboard <coughs> um, to be uh, to be compatible with an OS X install, and that's the uh, Realtek chipset. Uh, and I've got both Realtek for network and audio. Um, if I was if I was interested, say this wasn't. A recommended build. I'd also be interested in uh, what type of storage controller it uses, um, and I know this is uh, this can use the Intel um, chipset for storage because the marble chip listed here is a little bit uh, interesting to get going. Um, so yeah. So the first thing I did is go and get a DSDT from the database, and the thing there is we have a few options. So I match my board exactly, <clears throat> and we've got F6789, and these are the revisions for the BIOS. So if we did just quickly go and have a look at the downloads and choose BIOS, we can see that there is F8, F9, F10C, which is a new beta version, which must have just come out. Uh, to be honest, I think I'm on F8 at the moment. I might be on F9, I'm not sure. But I've got uh, F9 here anyway. Um, and yes, it does matter that we match up our bias revisions with the revisions from the DSDT database. Um, so once I've got that, I've placed it on my desktop. Um, Easy Beast install is for people that do not have uh, a DSDT. If you want an explanation of DSDT, it's in one of the other videos. Um, now, what we want to be, take care of is the descriptions. Quite often, people don't read the descriptions, and it tells us exactly what is going to happen, um, which is quite handy if we ever need to undo something. Um, and it's also good to do backups of files that are going to be replaced. So, as far as this goes, I've got my user DSDT on the desktop. Um, this tells me to name it dsdt.aml, so I can just quite literally delete that, and I'm all set, and it's on the desktop. But let's have a look at what else it does. If we read, it sets up a boot list file in our extra folder uh, with various different flags. It installs an SMBIOS plist for the Mac Pro 3.1 profile. It installs fake system management controller K extension, uh, which is very much required as uh, a real Mac has an SMC, which I believe is a replacement to the old style SMU units. In other words, think of it as a little bit of hardware that reports temperatures, fan speeds, all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so we can see that it is actually going to do uh, quite a lot more than just take this file just by checking this. Um, so what what in fact I would choose to do is always look in here and back up any files that it may intend to replace or patch just so that I've got a safety net in case anything goes wrong in which case then we can use single user go in and restore them. Um, so yeah I've got the if we go down to audio I've got the uh, Realtek, the ALC889. So, if whenever we're installing anything that's a K extension, because OS X deals with a very structured way of permissions for accessing files, we always need this system utilities checked if we're ever going to install any kernel extensions or anything that where the permissions are going to change in the system folder. Um, but in here, Let's have a look at Realtek Audio. So, the one thing that you don't want to do in MultiBeast is just check everything. That would just stop your machine from working, or 99.9% .9 of the time it would. So we need to make intelligent choices. Now, 
if we read here at this, um, we can see that it's an injector. That does not mean it's a uh, you know it's a fully fledged driver or a library for listening to sound. It actually means that it's going to inject the information for these these chipsets. And we can see that 889 is listed there and it is indeed on my board. So this is the correct one that I'm wanting. Now an injector is going to enable OSX to load libraries. So we can think of this as force detecting. Um, and the problem with choosing something like this if I had a chipset that wasn't on here is it would force detect something that wasn't there. <clears throat> and hence try and load libraries for it and then cause a kernel panic. But I know that I've got the ALC889. So it's an injector, but it's not the driver, so this alone is not going to help me. Now if we look at what this says, it says it replaces the Apple uh, High Definition Audio K text with the older library from 1063 that does support the 889 series. So I'm also going to need that. Now if I wasn't using user DSDT and I was using EasyBeast, I would not be using a DSDT. So there are um, options for me to try and enable the sound without a DSDT. Because the user DSDT, or this thing here, will actually give the addresses for all the, uh, for the sound hardware. Um, if I've not got that, um, I'm going to need to choose one of these options, a non-DSDT enabler. Um, but since I have, I'm pretty much fine. Uh, the Voodoo things are for, you know, uh, complete, you know, different unsupported sound hardware, but since I've got something that's supported, that's cool. Am I going to need anything else? Well, this will change, um, this will change the icons. If I've got icons on my uh, desktop that are not, um, uh, that are not, you know, like these lovely, uh, hard disk icons, um, I can use this tiny little thing to make them show as in, uh, internal drives rather than external, but <clears throat> I'm fine. Uh, graphics, I don't actually need anything at the moment, because to be honest, I wouldn't be interested in getting graphics running at this stage. Graphics would be one of the last things that I, uh, that I choose. Now, there's other options here, but it's very important um, that I read descriptions. Um, and also for something like if I'm installing this, for instance, it replaces the current I.O. USB family uh, K extension and this one. So I would choose to back these two files up. They live in here. So if I were to use this, I would back these up because it's going to replace the current ones. So it's very important. I can't stress that enough. Um, it'll save you having to reinstall if you just think, um, you know, if you just think a little bit about it. There are ones that don't replace anything. So if we look at Apple CPU Power Management, it will disable it, um, and it will install this. But I would still choose to be safe to back up Apple CPU Power Management. But you wouldn't just want to go through and randomly choose these if one of them sounds correct. You would want to know that you are going to be using it. So on to network. If we look at network now, I can see that I've got my uh, you know, RTL8111E chip. And if we look at this, uh, which is uh, Linux to Max Realtek uh, extensions, we can go to his blog and see that his uh, his driver set now supports the E version of my LAN, so I could choose to install that, or I could actually choose to install the uh, Gigabit Ethernet official drivers, which would also support my card. So it is just a case of personal preference there. Um, this is for obviously if I've got an Intel um, Gigabit uh, LAN which I haven't, so I would probably just choose either either of these two. Choosing both is a little bit of uh, a little bit irrelevant. Um, so what I'm going to do now is have a look briefly over the rest of the stuff. Now we're going to need a bootloader. Now if we look here, um, I can't remember whether this installs a bootloader to be honest. No it doesn't, but if we choose EasyBeast 
so we didn't have a DSDT. We can come down here and see that it might install, yes, it installs Chimera. Um, but since I'm using user DSDT, it does not install a bootloader. So <clears throat> I would be installing Chimera. Now if I do and I want it to look nice, I'm going to need a bootloader theme. So I would choose Tony Mac Classic. Um, now in system definitions, we can see that here it's already going to install the Mac Pro 3.1 and if you want a uh, information on what that is, look at a previous video. Um, so I don't necessarily need anything else checked now to install, but on occasion if I do run into problems I would recommend doing things in stages. So for instance I would not install a bootloader um, and I would quite potentially not install the network. I would just install user DSDT, system utilities and then audio, get my audio working and then once that's working come back in and system utilities and then get the network working in which case I would use let's say the official drivers and then install that and then once that's working and I'm tracking the changes and making correct backups then I would come in and use a bootloader, install the bootloader and also uh, I wouldn't need a system definition at that point because it would already be there and install a theme um, something something to be wary of is checking any of these options. Um, <clears throat> we can see, if, if we check any of these options, we can see that in here it's already set up a boot plist file. And if you're not sure what this is, check one of the first videos in this series. Um, so be very careful about choosing these, especially something, you know, especially I mean, use kernel fix is a little bit benign, but each give you a um, <clears throat> each give you a uh, an indication of what they are and if they're already set. So it's not needed when using Easy Beast or user DSDT because it already sets it. Uh, PCI configuration fix. Um, I think this is by default. Yeah, this is by default as well. Generate CPU uh, P states and C states. This is. Uh, this is by default. Instant menu is a good one actually, especially on um, especially on setup and when we're first getting things ready. So in our uh, in our boot p list, um, it'll have a current default timeout of something like two, which is not really quick enough. But if we check this and say instant method, it replaces that time uh, instant menu. It replaces that timeout and instantly goes to the menu which also gives us the option to enter boot flags if something's wrong or we need to do any repair. So that's a brief overview of Multibeast and how, how I would approach it. Um, again, I will say this again. Um, oh and don't check this, in my opinion, don't check this extensions migration tool by the way. <clears throat> um, again, make sure you read the description and back up what exactly is happening. Um, and the changes and track them so that you never have to keep reinstalling or say that multi-beast installing things out of multi-beast has crashed your machine it more often than not or 90 percent of the time it's clicking random things that has crashed your machine and your inability to revert those changes so like I say very easy just to read what exactly has been installed and where it's been installed, figure out if you need a backup because it's going to be replacing files um, and you know I know that this is going to install two files one's in system library preference planes, the other's in system library extensions and I can go in in single user mode and delete them if I need to. So yes, that's an overview of my basic motherboard setup and multi-beast.